What a fantastic game of football that was. In true North London derby fashion, it was absolutely bonkers. And I loved every single minute of it. I think both teams will be a little bit gutted with the fact that they didn't manage to secure three points. I think both teams will be fairly happy on some level that they both managed to secure a point because it could have gone either way. Ultimately, I think Arsenal will be incredibly frustrated, but Tottenham will be over the moon. I think that is Tottenham's best performance for absolutely ages. I honestly mean that. I think that is one of Tottenham's best performances in years. So much of what they did was so in keeping with who they are, so in keeping with the traditions of the club, so in keeping with the way that their fans want the game to be played. They took the game to Arsenal, they were brave, they went for the jugular and they played some glorious football in their nearest rivals and biggest rivals stadium. It was a huge performance for them and look, I'm going to talk about Arsenal in this video at great length but I think the place that I have to start, I am afraid, is Big Ange Postacoglu. I was slightly sneery when he was appointed. I was uninspired. I felt like he wasn't particularly impressive and it's all very well laughing at me now. Let's face it, Tottenham as a club weren't particularly inspired by Postacoglu. He wasn't their first choice. They wanted Nagelsmann, they ended up with Postacoglu and I ridiculed that. I was wrong. Postacoglu, I think, has been a sensation at that club. He has done so much, so right. I love the way that he conducts himself in press conferences. And do you know what, genuinely speaking, I don't even like saying this about a Tottenham manager or anyone associated with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, but I like him. I think he's a breath of fresh air and I think the way that he's got this Tottenham team playing is amazing. His ability to fortify players with belief and composure. Like that same Tottenham team, I'm telling you, that same Tottenham team under a different manager get beat today. They get beat convincingly today. And that is all because of Postacoglu. Like he is a breath of fresh air to the Premier League. And he is amazing, an amazing appointment for Tottenham. I think Arsenal will be gutted though. Arsenal will have to be gutted. You know, they play in Manchester City in a couple of weeks time and they needed to get something today because of the brilliance of Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp to a degree. The value of the draw has been stolen from the Premier League. Now you need to accrue a minimum of what, 90 points to win the league? Like your tally that you're chasing is 90 points. There's no such thing as a good point, particularly not at home. You do not get a good point at home. And the fact that Arsenal have already dropped points at home to Fulham means that they had to get something today. But if we're totally honest, and look, I have no dog in this fight. I don't particularly like either team and I don't want either team to succeed. Arsenal didn't deserve anything. They didn't, they, like, they didn't deserve any more than a point and that's what they got. They deserved what they got and that was a point. Despite the fact that they were winning the game twice, they didn't deserve any more. They were so sloppy at times. They were careless in possession. And what's weird is... The way that that team played, they, they're, they're players who we know are capable of so much more. They're players that we know are capable of so much, so so just being so much better. So much better on the ball, retaining possession, looking after it, being more threatening, going for the jugular, being more like the Arsenal that we saw this time last year. So something isn't quite right, something isn't quite landing. And if you explore both Tottenham goals, I think we know... And even the most devoted Arsenal fan now would have to concede that both, both Tottenham goals were totally preventable. They were avoidable. Like the fact that they managed to concede, they allowed Huminson to score off the back of just going ahead. How can you do that? And you know what? Jorginho needs to take such an awful lot of the blame here. Jorginho not taking the easy option, not looking after possession, protecting the ball. They have just scored. It is a crucial time. It is when you are at your most vulnerable. You need to look after the ball. You need to protect it with your life. You need to treat it like a newborn baby. Don't take any risks with it. And Jorginho does what? Tries to beat James Madison, who easily dispossesses him and sets it up beautifully for Hun Min Son. Plays a most perfectly weighted pass into Hun Min Son's path, who gently delicately caresses the ball into the far corner. Jorginho has cost Arsenal today. It's as simple as that. I've seen him do it for Chelsea against Arsenal, weirdly. But he has cost Arsenal today. Arsenal, I believe, would have won the game if they had just preserved their lead. Look after it. Take the sting out of the game. Allow the Tottenham players to get flat, to get dejected. Allow hostility and impatience to grow in the away end. And instead of that, they have offered them a way back into the game, given momentum away and actually allow Tottenham to believe that they can get something out of the game. Incredibly foolish. And when you behave like that, it's unacceptable. From my perspective, however, 
as a neutral in this affair, although I did want Arsenal to win, I must admit, because I don't like this rhythm that Tottenham are building. An incredibly enjoyable game. What a game of two in and fro in, robust, exciting, physical, aggressive, passionate, some brilliant skill on display at times, some wonderful goals. And I really did enjoy the game. I think Tottenham will probably be happier. Of both. Yeah, the Tottenham will definitely be happier, actually. Their record at the Emirates is pitiful. And Arsenal are, what, four years into this Arteta project? Tottenham are barely four games into this Postacoglu project. So they must be far happier. But I think both teams will... Both teams will have to settle for a point. I think both teams also have some injury concerns to worry about. Declan Rice going off for Arsenal is something to, to be concerned about. The threat of playing Manchester City without Declan Rice, when you have the advantage of playing them without Rodri and De Bruyne, they need him fit for that. I think he's got a calf injury, so they will be desperate to have him fit for that. And let's face it now, if Arsenal are going to genuinely launch a serious bid for the league, they need to go to City and win. They need to play Manchester City and win. There is no two, it's at the Emirates, forgive me. But there is no two ways about that. They have to play Manchester City and win. There are times when a draw against your league competitors is OK. Not anymore. Arsenal have boxed themselves into a corner where they now need to win that game. James Madison also, on about 75 minutes, took a jolt to the knee. You know, I was watching the game with the lads. It felt, felt awkward. And I know he played on afterwards, but he went off. So I think that there will have to be some, uh, some study on that, that particular situation. But generally for Arsenal, something's not clicking. Something is not right with this Arsenal team. And do you know what? From half-time on, I was never really confident that they were going to win the game. Going into the game, I felt like they'd win. I always think Arsenal will beat Tottenham. I always think that they'll find a way. History has taught us that Arsenal are better than Tottenham and Arsenal beat Tottenham. But from half-time on, it didn't really feel like that. Arsenal felt below par. Don't get me wrong, I'm not being hostile here. I'm not being harsh. There were mitigating circumstances, particularly when you look at the team that finished the game. If you look at the, the, the 11 that were on the pitch for Arsenal, a point is probably a good point because that's not a good team. But I think that they will be, they will be gutted. And I also think that... Arsenal did well, really, to re restore some control in the last 20, 25 minutes because the game felt like it was there for Tottenham. At that point, the momentum was with Tottenham. So the fact that Arsenal managed to protect their point, look after the game from that moment on, has got to be seen as a good thing. Um, God, it was a good game, wasn't it? Christian Romero, own goal. I mean, Saka did well, but it was definitely an own goal. And then Romero was at the epicentre of the penalty decision, but... Hoon Min Son's equalisers, I mean, they were brilliant. Really, really brilliant. Um, it's been a uh, it's been an interesting start for, for Arsenal. Something that actually I need to explore a bit more. I mean, what have they got now? They've they need to win. They need to beat City. And I'm now wondering, look, I thought Arsenal were gonna win the league this year. But it's looking more and more unlikely. I wonder if the Champions League is gonna be something that they could do something great in more than more than the Premier League. Because unless they go to City and win, and let's face it, it's not looking like they're going to do that. I just can't see them. I don't know, it's tough, isn't it? But if they beat City, then it's all there to play for. A huge game, a wonderful game, a mind-blowingly good game. I've loved every minute of it. And I will be back a little bit later. I've covered the Arsenal game, so I haven't watched the Chelsea game yet. But I'm going to watch the Chelsea game and I'm going to do a review on that a little bit later. So make sure that you click subscribe now because you don't want to miss out, I'm sure. Don't really want to think about that at the moment. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will see you all a bit later on to review Chelsea in a bit.